Greetings. I'm talking about my paper with Book and Dan on explicit constructions of more sum than different sets. So what is a more sum than different set? Well, let's consider a finite set of integers A. And there are two natural sets we can form given a set A. The first is the sum set, or the set of all sums, which will be defined as the set of all x plus y with x and y in A. And the second is the difference set, which is the set of all differences of elements in A. So a natural question to ask is, for a given set A, which one is larger? Or more generally, as I vary A over some number of sets, how often do I expect the sum set to be larger than the difference set? At first you might think typically the sum set will be larger, because if I take x and y to be the same, they all collapse and keep giving me the same element zero. But as addition is commutative and subtraction is not, for two distinct elements, it will contribute one sum to the sum set, but two differences to the difference set. And so while there were explicit known examples of sets that had more sums than differences, it was conjectured that they are very small. What we mean by that is if you look at the elements 1 through n, then there are 2 to the n possible sets. And it was thought the percentage of sets that were more sum than differences was such that you know, the ratio of the number of more sum than differences to 2 to the n would tend to 0. And it turns out this is not the case. Martin and O'Brien a few years ago proved that a positive percent of sets are actually sum dominated. The percent is very small, but it does not tend to zero. So the next natural question is, now that we know there are many of them, can we give explicit constructions of more sum than different sets? And so the previous constructions were very sparse, sort of like square root of two of the n sets. And so we're going to describe now a very simple construction that will allow us to get a huge family of some dominated sets. And the idea is as follows. We're going to start off with a set A that's more sum than differences. And we're going to write A as L union R, where L is the elements of A between 1 and say n halves, and R is the elements from n halves plus 1 all the way up to n. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our set of elements L, then we're going to add a string of 1s, then we're going to add some large set M whose elements will be almost free to take completely at random. Then we're going to have, again, all the elements, and then we're going to have the right set. So by this we mean between 1 and M, we have all the elements of A. And then we take every element from N plus 1 to, say, N plus K. We then take a very large set here, and we'll describe in a moment how we choose the elements of M. So let's say this is going from N plus k plus 1 to n plus k plus m. And then we'll start taking 1's again, n plus k plus m plus 1, and so on and so on, and then just end by shifting the elements of a on the right. And the goal is as follows. The small elements in the sum set are going to come from l plus l, and the large elements from r plus r, that's not going to change here. You know, similarly, uh, for some of the differences, you know, L and R are still going to be the same. What we want to do is choose our set M such that the number of sums we've added, you know, if we call this new thing A tilde, we can look at the sum set of A tilde, so A tilde plus A tilde, and we can look at the different set, A tilde minus A tilde. And we can look and see how many elements have we added to the sum set of A going to here, how many elements have we added to the different set. And if we've added the same number of sums as we have differences, then if A was originally a more sum than different set, then so will A tilde. And so all we have to do is choose M intelligently so that all possible sums and all possible differences that we could add are actually added. And one way to do this is to say that if we choose M so that every k consecutive integers, at least one is chosen, then a simple calculation shows that every possible sum and every possible difference will be included. So how can we ensure that? Well, we want to make sure that out of every k consecutive integers, one is taken. So we're going to force ourselves to take one out of every k halves. And so we will break m into blocks of size k halves, and we'll choose one element in each one of these somewhere to be in our set m. And by doing that, 
worst case scenario is if we have one here and one here, we still have at least one element in any block of length k. So when you go through the calculation and see how many sets this gives you, the number of such sets is roughly of size 2 to the n over n to the fourth. So unfortunately, while this does not prove that a positive percent of sets are more some than differences, you know, if we look at subsets of 1 through n, it does show that a very large, you know, very large number of them are you know, significantly larger than previous investigations.